Um, I, um, I, after finishing my PhD in physics, I was working in academia for some time. And then I worked uh, with a hedge fund company. Um, I know most of you might not have heard of uh, hedge funds, but uh, I bet most of you have heard of uh, mutual funds, right? I mean, we all have seen ads on uh, TV saying, you know, mutual funds say uh, kind of uh, thing. Um, uh, thing is like, you know, one would wonder, you know, what does uh, a physicist, someone who's got a PhD in physics do in a hedge fund, in a financial firm? Turns out, uh, you know, the mathematics, uh, my, my PhD thesis was extremely mathematical, right? I, uh, uh, I, it was in uh, mathematical physics and uh, uh, very complicated. I, I don't think uh, 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 other than my advisor and two other people who are in my committee, anybody has ever even read it. Uh, if I start talking about uh, my, the work that I did for my PhD to uh, uh, to my uh, wife, uh, who was my girlfriend at that time. Uh, uh, every time I start talking about it, you know, she starts yawning, right? It's extremely boring stuff. But then um, I got this call from this uh, uh, hedge fund company. They said they wanted people uh, who have a background in uh, physics or mathematics to join this hedge fund company, right? And I know nothing at all about finance. Um, turns out uh, that uh, you know, one of the key skills that you develop when you're working on a PhD uh, is like, you know, you look at data, right? And uh, the idea is that pretty much any of these companies, what they do is they are going to be using data and they're looking for people with skills, which um, uh, involve, you know, the ability to look at data, to be able to make intelligent conclusions about what this data is telling. And, um, of course, you know, there is this other element too, you know, this machine learning or AI uh, techniques, um, which are basically just, you know, an, an extension of what statistics is, basic statistics is, right? Um, so what I, they wanted me to do is uh, use my mathematical background by understanding of statistics and so on to look at uh, stock prices and see if you can predict direction of stock prices. Um, so I and and so what I didn't even realize at that time was that uh, you know the things that I was doing, which is basically be, uh, basic math uh, with the combination of statistics and some amount of uh, uh, you know data manipulations, uh, was was all of those set of techniques were going by this uh, newly labeled idea called data sciences. Right. Uh, what is data sciences? It's just basically math, right? Uh, things people have been doing before, but now there is plenty of tools that are available which make things easy for you to work with data and manipulate data. I um, I was with the hedge fund for about a decade. I moved to India. This was in Seattle. I moved to India about uh, uh, six seven years back now, and I teach data sciences. And uh, also, I have a consulting company where we use data sciences to make uh, uh, predictions and variety of uh, domains, right? Uh, we have worked in um, uh, retail business, you know, uh, so looking at uh, starting from, you know, grocery stores uh, where to try and decide, you know, do you have enough stock to uh, make sure that your products don't run out? Um, uh, to uh, things like, uh, you know, in manufacturing industry, can I predict when a robo is going to break down? Uh, ahead of time, because uh, in a in a uh, in a manufacturing setting, uh, particularly these large manufacturers, they have this entire process flow that's happening, and if there's a breakdown that happens in the process, uh, that is, can be expensive because your your entire flow has to stop and to fix it. So if you can predict ahead of time if a robot is going to break down just by using data, uh, then that saves the company millions of dollars. We have worked in healthcare where we looked at data and from the data uh, uh, we're able to give conclusions to doctors, right? Uh, saying that, you know, when we have looked at say blood tests from uh, this particular region, uh, you see that an unusually high amount of uh, abnormalities in this particular feature. Um, and there seems to be relationship between this particular kind of ailment to the other ailment. Uh, so those kinds of uh, things from medical analytics, uh, we, have, we have done work on it. But what really puts food on table is um, uh, financial analytics, where we are trying to predict stock markets. 
Um, and as uh, Jayant mentioned, crypto, uh, where we have uh, trading systems which use machine learning ideas to make these trades. Anyway, um, the reason why I, I was sort of giving this long uh, background is so that you understand that uh, data science is there everywhere. And uh, when you pick up these methods, pick up these techniques, you uh, can pretty much uh, use these skills in any of the domains uh, that you're interested in. You are, you, your undergraduate degree might be in one area, but that doesn't necessarily stop you from switching to some other area. I have, uh, as I said, you know, I, uh, my PhD was in physics uh, and uh, uh, my undergraduate degree was uh, engineering degree, PhD degree was in physics. I worked in a mathematics department, joined a hedge fund where I worked in finance, came back to India teaching data science, working in retail analytics, medical analytics, and manufacturing analytics, and financial analytics. So pretty much, you know, your career is uh, uh, really a, uh, a clean white slate. You can do anything you want with your career as long as you put your heart to it, right? There's plenty that you can do. And data science is one of those areas which allow you to jump from whatever your current expertise is uh, to, uh, to jump into another domain or actually make better progress in whatever domain you are doing, you are currently in. Okay, um, so what I want to do today is I want to talk about um, um, exploratory data analysis. So uh, just giving you a very basic um, uh, overview on how we go about looking at data how do we download data? How do I get this data into my computational uh, infrastructure? In this case, it's going to be uh, Google Colab. Uh, so how do you load data there? And um, how do you view the data? How do you figure out what kind of issues are there in the data? Um, and that's, and see, and we'll see if we get time, we'll see, can I find out if there are relationships between data, right? Those are the things that we are planning on uh, working today, okay? Um, and uh, I uh, like a class to be interactive, and uh, I would strongly encourage you guys to, uh, uh, you know, ask any questions uh, that you have. Um, I, I know I'm the only person with the video on. Um, the, if you guys are comfortable turning your video on, please do so. It's, uh, you know, having uh, our conversations, you know, staring at a screen uh, is always awkward. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, Jeb Jyoti, Umesh, Ritwik. I, I truly appreciate uh, you guys, uh, uh, you know, uh, allowing you to, uh, you know, getting rid of the shyness and uh, turning the camera on, you know, to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, it seems like a more personal interaction. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yeah, I have a, a whiteboard and then there is this one window uh, which says EDA. Uh, yep, yeah, you are able to see my screen. Good. Okay, uh, so let me start where, by um, you know opening a data. Um, most of your most of you guys, I'm sure, are familiar with Excel, right? You have open data sets in Excel, so we're going to start off from there, right? And then we'll talk about you know how do I get this data set onto the my uh, in in Python, okay? So I have this one particular data called it's automobiles.csv file. I am going to open this. Just a second. Okay. Um, now you see that there are a bunch of these different uh, columns in this particular data. Uh, we are not going to spend too much time on what exactly this uh, data is, but then you know what, it's easy to sort of guess uh, at this. Um, I see this drive wheel column, and then I see length column, wheelbase column, uh, numsil is the this thing. So this particular column that I have here um, looks like a descriptor of what these values are. Um, so it looks like this is a descriptor of some set of automobiles, right? Um, if I have to make a guess, I would say that the, it's, uh, it's listing out different uh, automobile models and it's talking about some particular feature of these automobile models, 
right? So I have in the last column here, R, this one is the price right. of the automobile. So that looks, um, uh, it's perhaps a price of these different cars that they are describing. We don't have exactly the, the, the maker of it or the model of the car, but then the, we have other features there, right? Is this a RWD, FWD, 4WD? Uh, any idea what these numbers are? Any guesses? Uh, the four, four, front wheel drive and uh, front wheel drive, very nice drive and four, 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 drive. Four, four, four wheel four. drive, right? So there are different features. So there are a bunch of different types of cars that are there. And then we have wheelbase over there, the car's wheelbase there, the, the weight, the height of it, uh, the weight, the curb weight of the car, uh, some description of the engine and so on, right? Now, generally what uh, we are trying to do in when uh, you are looking at the data is that you start with some particular purpose, right? Um, the purpose might be that you are, uh, one second, where did my draw go? View. Um, that's okay. I'll uh, just copy this onto that. Right? So I generally the purpose of having this uh, uh, data is to do um, some kind of analysis on that. Perhaps you want to understand why is a car priced in some particular way. Right? There are different models of cars and the price of these cars are widely different. And you want to perhaps understand what, in what are the things that is perhaps driving the price of a car. right? And that's the kind of uh, analytics one would try to do. right? Um, and so, or for that matter, you know, once you have done this kind of analysis, um, where you are figuring out a set of relationships between these values, you know, the, uh, the width of the car, the height of the car, the weight of the car, the engine and the type of the drivetrain and so on and so forth. So if you're finding a relationship between all of that and price, then what you are said to have done is you have built a model. You have built a model for trying to predict the price of a car, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this particular data into my whiteboard so that I can scribble on it. Okay, so there is my data. So generally, you will be, when you're doing any kind of analysis, any kind of business analysis, you would start, you'll end up with some kind of data set, right? And in this data set, the way things are going to be arranged, um, you know, typically you're getting this data in an uh, Excel sheet, we are going to uh, use some terminology. This is a terminology you'll keep hearing over and over again, right? I first indicated to you what are things that we might be interested in. Let us say we are trying to predict the price of the car, right? So we are trying to understand what are the features that determine the price of the car. So price is something that I'm trying to understand. How am I trying to understand this? I'm trying to understand the price in relationship to other of these values, right? The, the weight of the car, the fuel system, the engine power, uh, so on and so forth. You're trying to find a relationship between that, right? Now, here is the terminology that you keep hearing over and over again. Each of these columns, we are going to use the term variables. Variables is a term that we are going to use for these columns, right? This whole thing as a whole thing is a data set. Right? That's a term that you all are familiar with. The whole thing of what I have is here is a data set. Every single row over here is called as a, we typically call it as a record. Each one is a record, right? Um, you will hear the term record or in Python, you will often hear the word tuple, right? Both are equivalent. Tuple is just a collection of these numbers. Uh, uh, a record is a, is a language that sort of comes from uh, databases, right? When people are, uh, uh, you know, have stored this data in a database, you want to go ahead and fetch a record. In this case, you're trying to fetch some information about one particular car, right? Um, and uh, each of these are variables. Why are these called as variables? Um, this, uh, the entries that are there in a particular column, 
they are all talking about exactly same kind of things right if we are talking about the height of the car all of these entries are height of the car now we are saying that it's possible it's likely that the price of the car might be varying based on this particular value right these are values that vary for different records right these are values that might vary for different records so we typically use the term variables or in the context of machine learning you will hear the word predictors we are going to use these columns the information that is there in the column to predict the value of the price okay um and there's a whole bunch of analysis we can do we can try and study you know how are these price columns related to any of these other columns um we can study we'll will eventually you guys will get there right but the first step to get uh, get there is uh, first load all of this data into your uh, system into uh, into the python infrastructure so let's start talking about how do we go about loading this into my uh, uh, python infrastructure now python uh, you could potentially install python on your computer and this variety of python distributions um, you will be you could do that but uh, the thing is google has made it extremely easy um to uh, for us to try out different experiments in python right um what they have done is uh, is something remarkable they are allowing you for free uh, access to their cloud infrastructure where python is already installed right if you have a google account you are able to log into a collab Uh, you are able to get to uh, and you have a browser you can log in and you will be able to get access to a python installation right um and uh, that is what uh, is the uh, the collab notebook i i believe you guys are sort of familiar with collab notebook you have seen it before correct so i'm i'm not going to uh, describe different features of it and so on but here is a, a, a an instance of there's a python kernel that's running in the back end and any command that i type here will be able to uh, will be executed by this python uh, instance the python kernel that's running in the back end um now for me to do the analysis i want to load data into python into this particular collab notebook okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first start by opening my drive my google drive okay so i'm going here to drive.google.com and um i have a bunch of folders um and uh, so let's go ahead and click through right just just for the heck of it where it's uh, drive.google.com and uh, i didn't want this particular google account i have a bunch of google accounts in that google account so this is a google account that i wanted i go to the appropriate directory where i want to uh, store data okay so i created i have a directory called data sets and that is where i like to store data that i'm going to be using for my uh, running any of this analytics so over here i'm going to go and here was a folder where i saw this particular file automobiles.csv i'm going to go ahead and drag this folder out there okay and you see that it's uploading it and there now it's appeared there automobiles.csv is there it's there now on my google drive um now i have opened a collab file this is an empty file it doesn't have anything in it i want to start loading the the file over there now the first thing is i before we uh, move anywhere i want to make sure that um, um you guys have a uh, i i prefer if you guys try coding along with me okay um and uh, it will be very 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 helpful if uh, you guys can start coding along with me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start off with one particular data set first let me i'll just show you this particular one then we'll i'll, I'll give you the link for the data, uh, data set which you guys will also be able to use okay um so here is uh, uh, let me first show you what i'm planning on doing i am planning on typing my commands here uh, uh all the commands which will allow me to load and so on i want you guys to actually uh, if you have two monitors great if you don't have two monitors what i would like you to do is divide this window 
uh, this is the browser window. I want you to open a browser window where you go to Collab. And I want you to move the window to one side. So if you press uh, the window key, if you're using Windows, you press the Windows key and the left arrow button, this will go to that one side. And on the other side, you can use, you can click on anything uh, that you want. For example, in this case, I clicked on this uh, Explorer window. Now my window is divided into two. One side, I have uh, uh, the, the Explorer window. The other side, I have my browser. What I hope you guys will do is on one side, if you can put the zoom uh, so that you can see my window, what I'm doing. And on the other side, if you open your own Collab notebook, you can type, you can look at that and start typing, okay? Um, eventually, you understand what I mean, right? I, uh, I hope what I said is clear. Uh, you, you might, uh, uh, your screen might sort of look like this. It'll look like this. One part of it will have the Zoom meeting. The other part of it will have the collab window. Okay, if you guys have, have that particular okay. input, then you can watch what I'm doing and also execute on the other side. Okay, um, now what I'm gonna do is this particular data that I have, automobiles.csv, I am going to provide a, a link for this. I'm gonna copy this link um, and I'm gonna paste it on the uh, zoom window. Okay. You can click on that and you will be able to download this uh, file, the CSV file. Let me know if you're having any access problem with that. Uh, sir, the access needs to be provided. Access is not yet provided. It's restricted. Oh, sorry. Anyone with the link? Sorry, my fault. No, yeah, now we should have it. Okay. If uh, you're able to get access to it, if just plus press yes, or you can speak up. Yeah, awesome. You're able to get download. I'm sure then most people will be able to download. Okay, then let's uh, get started on this. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to load this data, right? Now, there are lots of uh, modules that are there, libraries that are there in Python for uh, doing data analysis, right? Python actually is a pretty old language. It's been there for a while. Um, initially, that particular language, Python was very popular for text analysis and string manipulation, that kind of things, right? Somewhere about 10 years back, it got taken over by the data science folks. And now there's been like tons and tons of libraries uh, which uh, allow you to do data analysis, right? One of the libraries that is there is uh, Pandas, right? Uh, Pandas stands for panel data, right? Uh, pan stands for panel data. So what is panel data? Panel data is an Excel sheet, right? It's a, you have a data panel, so to speak, right? Uh, Pandas allow you to uh, an analyze these data panels, right? So you want to import that particular library. So I want to import Pandas. Um, now, I want Pandas has a lot of functionalities to do all kinds of things. And that's some of the things that we are going to be talking about today, right? Um, but each time I want to call that functionality, I need to specifically say that I am asking for, for example, reading a file. I'm asking to read a file using the read file function in Pandas, right? I need to explicitly say it every single time, right? Because that could be read file functionality in other libraries as well. Right. So what we are going to do, we are going to make our life easy. And uh, instead of typing pandas uh, fully every single time, we're going to just say import pandas as pd. Now, what this command does is it says that, okay, I'm going to be using pandas. And whenever I type pd, it means pandas. Okay. That's what that command means. Um, 
now what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and use my full screen so that uh, you are seeing uh, the whole screen on your side. Now what I'm going to do is I want to start reading the data. Okay. Now this Google Collab as, as such is um, running on a separate set of servers. The a different servers than the ones that are hosting the Google Drive. Right, Google Drive, for example, Amazon has its own file servers, uh, but for a large extent, they actually use Amazon's infrastructure for uh, storing data. Right um, now, this particular one, Google Collab, this is actually uh, specifically meant for running this Python kernel, and it's running on a, some other server. This one does not, by default, have access to your data that is there in the uh, in the drive where you have stored. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get access to that. So I'm going to click on this window there. You see this rectangle there. I am going to click on that rectangle. When I click open, I see these options that are there. You see sample data. Now sample data is uh, a bunch of this data Google has provided along with this collab access. Now, each one of us, when we open this collab file, each one of us actually get a separate Python instance. Your Python instance is different than mine, right? Each one of us get a separate Python instance. Now, it would be incredible waste of time and waste of money for Google if they allocate a separate machine for each one of us. So what they have done is they've opened up a separate virtual instance for, for each one of us, right? When it opens that virtual instance, it, has, it comes with this preset data. But the moment we stop using Collab for some time, this instance gets destroyed and Google frees up its memory and its computational power for, so that other people can use it. Right? So this is sort of on-demand usage. Right? Now, we want to load data from our drive, and which is a permanent storage. Right? The, so you see this button here. This is a, your drive. I'm going to click on that. And now it's going to ask me, permit this notebook to access your Google Drive files. It's asking me. I said, yes, connect to the Google Drive. Now it's trying to mount the Google Drive. You see mounting Google Drive. And there, it has mounted the Google Drive. And now you see there is this another option that's popped up. It's called Drive. Now my Google Drive is available for access here. I'm gonna click on that. And it says My Drive. I'm gonna click on that. It says Collab Notebooks, which is where all the Collab Notebooks that you work on get stored. That is the folder where it's stored. But we stored our data set in a folder called data sets. I click on that. There, I see automobiles.csv. This was the file that I had uploaded. So now that file is accessible, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on these three dots on the side. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to say copy path. I copy path. Now I'm going to go here. And then I'm going to start typing, okay? Data, I'm, I'm ready to load my data. And I'm going to put it in a data, uh, uh, in a variable called data, right? Uh, so now I'm, let's go ahead and read a file. The file that I want to read is a CSV file. So the command for that is read underscore CSV, okay? And that's the command I'm going to type. Now look at the structure, pd dot read dot CSV. What does this pd mean? It, I'm referring to pandas. pandas. I already told whenever I type pd, it'll mean pandas. So from pandas, call this function read.csv. That's what that command means, right? The moment I type, Google helpfully provides a whole bunch of uh, options that you can give when, you, uh, when you're trying to read a file. Let's not worry ourselves about all of those options, right? Let's just go ahead and type the name of the file that we want, okay? So I am going to type the name of the file in quotes, okay? But I need to find the, uh, uh, specify the file. And this is where us having copied the path helps. I'm just gonna press control V and this entire path appears, okay? So I don't need to remember exactly where it was. All I needed to do was I needed to explore my way there, click on those three dots, click copy path, and now it's there in the memory and my this thing and I paste it over here. And now I'm going to hit enter and my data is read. Okay, um, let's just double check whether data is read. Uh, how do I check whether data is read? One way I can check 
whether data is right. It's just, I can type data and hit enter and it's going to show the data. Yes. It's going to show what, what data it is right. Okay. And it nicely summarizes it for us. It says that, oh, it read 205 rows and 18 columns. Okay. I want to make sure that you guys are there with me. Can you guys try repeating uh, this step? Professor Anand, yes. I am a little lost here. Okay. Not been able to, uh, would you mind if I share my screen, the Excel, uh, the, the, the collab screen? If, if you can just tell me the error, then that, because- No, other... I didn't encounter any error. Where I'm stuck exactly is after the command, import pandas as PD, I executed it. Okay. okay. It then shows, I mean, there should have been a, a, a number assigned to that particular command, but it didn't. Ah, Furthermore, okay. I was so, not able to open that, uh, you know, the menu, the pop-up. the pop -up I, that... I understand. I understand. So what we need to do is this. Uh, uh, this is something I should have been explicit. I So here, there are what uh, Google Collab does is it allows you to type multiple commands in one cell. So what you're seeing is a cell, okay? For example, I can hit enter and type another command. NumPy is another library, okay? And I can keep hitting enter and typing as many commands as you want, but the commands will not get executed until you press shift and enter. When you press shift and enter, the commands get executed. And this is done. The other thing, how do I go to the left-hand menu? I mean, the drive where you access the... So here, the, I have four icons there. Right. And the last one is a one which is looks like a folder. All right. I okay. click on that. Now it opens up. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Hmm. So I can't find the uh, automobiles.csv file either in my drive. Can you? Because you haven't uploaded it yet. So you need to upload it first. Okay. So we downloaded it first and then we are we have uploaded yeah. it. You have okay. downloaded it onto your yeah. local machine. Got it. From Got your, it. my local machine, you move to the drive. Anything that you want to access, you move it to the drive. Sir, I, I have already downloaded the file and I, I have already uploaded it on Google Drive. Okay. But uh, when I'm clicking on that, uh, this style, this particular thing, uh, mm -hmm. the file icon, I'm not able to find that folder. I mean, I'm not because able to find you need file. to first click on oh. this. On the top, you need to see the third button as a drive. Huh. You need to click on the drive because your the instance of Python that is running does not automatically have access to your drive. It would be a violation of your privacy if any Python program gets access to your drive functions. So you need to explicitly give fun access. So you click on that button. Drive click button, on the right? button. Yeah, yeah, done, done, done. Now it'll ask you, it's trying to mount. Can I give access? Done, yes. Done. That is also done. That is also done. Then. Yeah. Okay. Once it's done, then this uh, drive will show up. But uh, in my screen, there are several, several icons are coming up. Like after, sure. after. But, uh, let's go back to the first one. The very first bit, because if you open, It'll open up a whole bunch of other things, but do not open everything uh, or, or be better still, why, why don't we close this X and right. then restart with that uh, thing. Now you should see drive there. Right. Yes. Open that drive. Now it's going to show you my drive. Okay. Hmm. My drive will show up. Um, uh, uh, I'm not still getting. Mm. If, uh, um, if someone is able to see it, then please do let me know. You, if you are allowed permission, you will start seeing drive. The moment you see drive, you open it. Now you'll see files inside your drive. 
No, sir. Actually, what is happening right now is uh, I am not able to see this particular part. This my right yes, part. Yes, it's after skin. mounting. After mounting, it is it is saying as uh, run this cell to mount your Google Drive. Okay, Absolutely. coming as a pop -up. copy. That's right. Copy. Yeah, just uh, you you will get a open uh, you will get a cell here, and then you see that uh, play button. Hit play. Yes. Play button. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Where it said run that cell. Again, it's saying like connect to Google Drive. Yes. Give permission. Again, we have to give. Yes. Okay. So, so Professor Anand, finally, what I have in my message saying from Google Colab import drive drive dot mount mounted at content drive. Yes. I mean, it yeah. means that it's saying your Google Colab. Your drive is available in this folder called drive. Right. But honestly, I didn't actually see the, the way it is structured in your PC is a little different in mine. I, uh, uh, I don't have this data folder, uh, drive folder. It's not showing up as drive folder. But yes, I could still access the automobile.csv file. Okay, so the, uh, if you are able to see the automobile somewhere yes. in your drive where you have kept, right. my, the files that I have will be different than the files you have. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, and now uh, once we copy, once we reach there uh, to that particular data set, yeah. and uh, we can copy the path. Okay, Absolutely. now that I'm will be this. So I'm not able to see that uh, pathway yet, this drive thing. Uh, not able to see that pathway yet. Can I can I just upload it directly from my computer? Will that be a problem? I mean, so let me. I will give you another way. I can definitely give you another way. I will just give you a, uh, and this is uh, allow shows us another way of loading it. Okay. Um, I am going to uh, paste this uh, link. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, here is another way of loading this. Okay. If you have, uh, we uh, here is another way of loading it. I'm having data is pd dot read underscore csv. I'm going to put here and I'm going to place that link. The link that I just think, entire link. Okay. Oh, sorry, dot CSV. Apologize. I need to give access again. Same problem. I will just give you access to that. One second. So we need to close that with that uh, double quotes at the end of the address. Sorry. Can I save? Absolutely. Pd dot uh, csv expected one field. Let's start it again. Unfortunately, I'm getting trouble. Let me just put it on my uh, directly on the uh, drive path, and that way it's better. You'll be able to access it. There's issue with my Dropbox. Half a second. So, uh, one of the things that basically collab does allows you sorry uh, one of the things that uh, um, uh, pandas allow you to do 
is actually it allows you to download data directly from the web page itself, right? So here I'm showing you, I'll find you the path for that automobiles.csp. Once I get there, I'll, I'll share with that. But again, I'm going to show you as an example, another data set, right? Here is another CSV file that is there. And uh, what I can do is I can, uh, any CSV file anywhere can be loaded that way. Pandas read underscore CSV. Um, with that uh, command, right? It don't download it. And now I can look at the data um, and uh, here is the data, right? Any CSV, as long as it's accessible through a URL or on your local file, you will be able to load that particular data, right? This automobiles file, I will find an online link for you guys and I'll send it to you. But meanwhile, why don't you guys use this link? Uh, this is a different file for now use this, but those who have not been able to successfully get it from your drive, you can use this data set, okay? It's all uh, the process that we are gonna be doing uh, is not gonna be any different. Okay, you see that PD underscore CSV and then just type this link. Okay, PD CSV. Um, can you please go back to the command line, Professor? Sure. PD underscore data pd dot read, uh, read underscore csv and then you paste the entire read underscore pd read underscore csv So let's um, uh, move on to the, uh, the next step. Now that you have downloaded the data, yes. you have the data now in the environment. Now, when I typed data, it just blindly just shows the whole data, right? It's kind of silly. I mean, it doesn't, uh, uh, you know, we have your uh, entire screen is sort of taken over by this, right? Often your intent is you just want to see what is there in the data, right? Did it load properly or not? So I just want to see the top of the data. To see the top of the data, the command is data.head. When I type data.head, it just shows the first five lines of the data. You can ask me, you know, how about if I want to see the last part of the file, instead of the first part of the file, last part of the file, okay? Then I can do data.tail. And when you hit data.tail, you see the last part of the file. Can you guys try out these commands? Let's do an update. Awesome. Okay. So now you have uh, downloaded um, the, the you, you've gotten the data. You have um, um, looked at what is the content of the data by just briefly uh, by looking at one second. Um, just, yeah. So um, uh, by looking at the head and the tail, the nice thing with these commands, head and tail, is that it actually allows you some freedom on 
to specify how many lines I want to see. I can actually say data.tail and 10. And now it's going to show me the last 10 lines of that data. Okay. Uh, you can specify how many lines. By default, it shows five. Okay. Now, there are um, um, uh, people uh, who might say that, you know what, typically, you know, I'm dealing with a large data set and this uh, data might be, let us say, a million records are there. Again, what is records? What do we mean by record? Uh, to the row. The complete row. Yeah. The, the rows are records. So 100 records are there. Uh, or sorry, a million records might be there, right? That's or tuples, right? So that may, you might have large data set, right? And so you might say that, you know what, maybe uh, if I see head, I'm seeing the top of the data. And uh, if you see tail, you're seeing the bottom of the data. Um, is there a way to see, you know, in general, what do these records look like in the middle, right? Um, and, uh, and, and that, uh, to look at the data in the middle. So I can just do sample. Just uh, give me an arbitrary sample from the middle. Right? And that uh, sort of, you want to get the uh, feel for basically uh, uh, how the data looks like. And, and this sample, again, also takes in uh, arguments. So I can do sample 15. What do you think that does? Shows 15 me 15, row, 15, row. 15, 15 different rows. Okay. Randomly, it gets 15 different rows and then shows that, right? It's just sampling. And look at the numbers, right? It just randomly showing these values, right? Because often you want to get a sense of what the data looks like instead of just on the top and the bottom. Because sometimes if it's an ordered set, you won't quite understand the variation that is there in the data, right? Now, um, we haven't actually talked about what this data is, right? Um, now, one way to uh, start looking at what this data uh, uh, is, let's just start by, uh, often the, the, the data itself is so big that it's uh, hard to even understand from looking at this rows and uh, columns. The number of columns might be really, really large as well, right? In which case, even displaying it gets painful. So one thing you would do is you would start by typing data.info, right? Now, when you type data.info, this is now actually uh, starting to tell what it's showing, right? This is a basically a data frame that it's showing. This data frame, what do you mean by data frame? First place, data frame is um, uh, an entity which is basically like an Excel sheet where it has got bunch of these variables there. Now, this is different from an array. Array is something that we have learned in mathematics uh, from uh, school, right? What is an array? Array is basically a collection of numbers that was put there, right? Um, data frame is, again, it might be a collection of numbers, but it might have different entities. So for example, this particular data frame, what did it have? It had one column of numbers, second column of numbers, third column of numbers, but the fourth column was not numbers, it was string, right? An array is something which is, can have all entries to be of same type. Either they're all num numerical or they're all string. That's array. Data frame allows you to have different types of entities that are there along each one of these variables. Okay, so now what data.info does is it talks about each one of these variables, right? It talks about um, uh, R&D spend, administration, marketing spend, state, profit. It's telling me what kind of information that is contained in that data frame, right? Notice this thing, right? 
it does not it did not give me information about the columns sorry it did not give me information about the rows it gave information about the columns right why because it knows that this is the thing right it knows that we this tool is being used for data sciences along the columns are variables right these are the things that we are going to be eventually be using to predict things right now it's now telling me what are the variables that are there in this structure right and that is why by default it's actually giving me only information about this columns now let's try to understand this right what does it say so the first one is r and d spread r and d so these are this is a data set from different startups startup companies uh, from 50 different startup companies uh, uh, this thing information about that has been collected now what are the information that's there r and d spend of a startup okay how much are they spending for r and d administration expenses in the startup marketing spend for the star startup then the state column says which state was the startup in and then this profit column talks about how much profit the startup had right these are the variables that are there now it's telling me right away that these are floating point numbers meaning these are all numerical values right and this state one is an object let's say it's basically saying it's a string right it's not a numerical value right sometimes what will happen the numbers that you might have might be integers in which case it'll actually say the d type will show it as integer okay but this info directly tells you what kind of data you have any questions i i would like you guys sir to, yeah please uh when you put the parenthesis after info uh, and uh, you ran, ran the command it showed some other thing and when you put the parenthesis it show it's showing another thing that's right so usually when you have um, a, a parenthesis that is uh, when you put a parenthesis um, you are asking it to execute a function okay um, when you are learning uh, later on when you learn more things about python you'll talk about how do you write a function right now a function typically takes arguments in so you put a parenthesis and you specify arguments in right and that is what this does many times what happens is when you don't put the parenthesis it actually sometimes show you the code or which is the where is this function written where is the, what is this function do it shows a code with that the output is often different when you don't put the parenthesis okay when you are putting the parenthesis i'm explicitly calling that function i'm asking it to execute this particular function just like that's the same thing that we did here sample there is a function that's written in pandas which will allow you to take a sample of a data frame and it takes it takes an argument the argument shows how many rows do you want to sample and even here notice right what did it do when i asked it to sample it took a sample of records it internally knows that you are working on a data science project and information is going to be along the columns are these variables and different records uh, are there you are asking for a sample of these records and that's what this is uh, getting me it's getting me the sample of these records right um and you so you're um uh, when you're talking about head and tail again it's showing the top of those uh, data set and bottom of this uh, data set now um there is also when particularly when you have a large data set when I just type the data command, it just scrolls through all of them. It's just very hard to read, right? So often the first thing you do is start off with typing data.info. So understand what is there in the data. Now you are going to get this list of columns. The other thing that you do is you would uh, do data.shape, right? Now, when you do data.shape, it says what is the shape of this data it's saying that there are 50 rows and five columns okay 
50 rows and five columns. So 50 records and five variables are there, right? Now, um, sometimes what we want to do is we want to um, uh, often understand one particular variable, right? And if I want to understand some particular variable, I can actually go ahead and do data. And I open a square bracket. And it's the moment I open a square bracket, it suddenly is giving me options. Google is very smart, right? Just like when you're trying to search something, it uh, gives you options of what are the likely things that you might be looking for. Here, it's giving me these options. Let's look at it. What are the first options? What do you think these options are? The first four. There are only variables. Ah, it's telling me the variable names. So I can actually go click on profit and then I, I can hit enter. And now it's showing the list of profit, the profit values. So now I can actually look at a single variable if I choose to. Okay. I can choose to look at the single variable. But right now, we are not going to analyze the single variable yet. But this, uh, essentially, I'm saying it knows the structure that you have fed it. It knows you're ready for data science. These are the variables that are there. These are the records. And so everything it, do, it, it actually enables you to do things easily without you having to specify that variables are along the columns or uh, records are along the row. That's by default the assumptions. Um, any questions on what we have? I am stuck actually over there only. I was not okay. able to upload that file. So I'm just following your uh, this thing. Perhaps sure, so when the recording uh, comes in, I hope I can figure it out. So yeah. Okay. Uh, because yeah. I don't have prior experience in coding. So I just no, I, I absolutely understand. So I uh, gave this command because of that. So now you can just download this. I'm going to paste it again. Because when I'm entering these things, it's showing a syntax syntax error. So at ah. some point I have made some error because of which this particular error is continuing. Correct. So I Correct. don't know where I have gone wrong. <laughs> Correct. And if you, the errors are usually descriptive and I will help you with this as well. I right now copy pasted something. So right? Shall I copy paste it from here to there? I mean, from exactly. the chat. Just window. copy paste it directly. Okay. And I'm copy pasting. So that will not be a continuation of the same, right? I mean, where should I copy paste it? Like on uh, collab? Any, anywhere. One of the cells. One of the cells. Any of the cells that is there. Whichever cell you want, you go ahead and copy paste it. Ha, done. Then I copy paste it. Then shall I shift and enter? I mean, press yes. shift and enter? Yes. Oh, no, it's coming as invalid syntax. Yeah. Syntax error. I am also ending up with the same difficulty. I must check with the command line. It says data is equal to pd dot read underscore CSV, if I'm not wrong. Correct. Because it is not uh, so visible, clear to me here. So in spite of that, okay, possibly uh, you have to put that... Uh, uh, URL under that semicolon or the colon. Yeah. Anyone with this, this thing? Yeah. I'm going to copy this. Right. Uh, the My entire notebook there. Now you should be able to. PD dot read underscore CSV. You should be able to see my entire notebook. Yeah. Sir, it, uh, we need access, sir. I thought I just gave access. No, no I just clicked. It's showing as request access. Yes, Any it worked time? this time. It's, it did work. Uh, yes. With the link. Uh, yeah, please try again now. Yeah, sure. Data dot head. 
okay if anyone is able to access it if we just say yes that will be uh, that will help us because then we'll know whether it's one so, person's uh, yeah. uh, 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 some issue or the general so funny is able to access it um yeah kiran is also able to access it yes yeah, so now we can access this one so now what is to be done shall we copy paste it from here to there uh, from yes. your folder yes Where, okay so i'm just copy pasting i mean copying the entire thing from start to beginning and Correct. i'm pasting it and i'm pasting it on it uh, like at any cell right any cell any cell just co co copy paste the commands not the output so you would for example copy paste import pandas is that working is import pandas working In, yes import okay. pandas then, as pd is working fine then good wonderful then just directly go ahead and copy paste this uh, cell 8 what i have cell 8 just a moment so cell 8 uh... cell 8 means this one uh, data is equal to pd dot read csv this one right. yeah and with the url url is the same url right that yeah, this this is the one the gist dot i'm marking on the screen i'm showing you yeah yeah sure just just yeah. a moment let me try it now data is equal to pd dot read data data is equal to and between data and is equal to there will be a space right sorry between data and equal, is equal to, to yes there will be a space right yes yeah data is equal to pd yeah. dot read read right yeah data is equal to pd dot read underscore csv right yeah underscore c -A no please don't try to type it i'm saying just copy it in the interest of time because this is going to be long really long url so i'm suggesting just copy this entire thing like that uh i mean how do i copy from here uh, yes uh, control it control. is uh, no control possibility control. that we can copy it uh, uh no, he has put in it he has put in he has put in in the chat box actually yeah So, yeah, you can just click on the uh, the the link, and it will take you to the. Uh, yeah, to it will from that exactly the, page. You can copy the URL. So, yeah, now yeah, now I have done that. So it's coming as a like uh, a range of data or uh, like numbers and California, Florida, like this. It's coming. So is it a this, proper thing? This is what you are seeing uh, on my screen where we loaded. No, this is not something I am seeing. No, this is not something I am seeing. I'm seeing a whole okay. array of data. Uh, I will. I uh, so what I'll do is I will share this um, uh, thing. It looks like many of them are able to do it. So I'm not sure exactly what the problem is. Um, I I uh, this thing will be made available, right? So you will be able to uh, see this uh, on your on your site, right? Um, there is an option as well where you can actually copy this collab notebook into your collab and start working directly from this as well. right um but let's um move on just so that you understand the 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 concepts and everything that you need will be there in the sheet right and then you can just follow along with this uh sheet so i have come till here where i'm looking at the shape data dot shape which is telling me what is there in that particular data right um now there is also this other command where you want to if you want to understand what are the different types of variables that you have then there is this d types is the command which says that i want to understand the data types okay um what does what do i mean by that so i had these five different variables now it's explicitly telling me this variable r and d spend is actually a number administration is also a number marketing spend is also a number state is actually an object so it's not a number so this sometimes in when when we are writing our code we will want to look at each one of the data type and deal with it differently if the variable that we are dealing with is a string then i might want to do one set of operation the variable if i am dealing with if it's a number then i might want to do different types of operation right right for example right what type of operation might you be interested in um i am looking at uh profit 
right? Um, what might be the operation that I might be interested in? I might like to understand what is the range of different profit values that are there, right? What is the average value of profit? What is the lowest profit? What is the highest profit amount? I might want to understand those things from that numerical value. And those things might not quite make sense when I'm talking about strings, right? There's no value of, there's no meaning in taking average of strings, right? So often we might want to understand what is this type of variable that is there. And this command data.dtypes tells us what type of variable we are dealing with. Okay. Now I can, uh, the, the thing is, the beautiful thing is the writer of pandas, the, the creator of pandas um, was uh, someone who is actually, interestingly, very similar background like I have. Right? This was a person who was working in a financial company mm -hmm. and they were analyzing investments. Right? And typically when you're analyzing investments, when you're trying to analyze stocks, um, you are looking at data, multiple data. Right? The, what is the profit uh, of uh, a company in this quarter? What was it in the previous quarter? What is it 10 quarters back? Uh, what is the expense ratio? What is the P ratio? All kinds of things about stocks that uh, they do this analysis, right? Which is why this data is often, uh, they, they have an entire panel of data, which is why he wrote this function called panel data, right? Pandas, this because of that. So one of the things that this writer created is that after he load the data, one of the first things you want to do is understand things like, uh, what is the mean? value of the different variable and so on. So he gave uh, this nice function called describe, right? Um, describe, what that does is, let's see what it does. Oh, look at that. What did it do? It's given me some information about each one of the variables. Do you see that? Mm, yes. What is the information it's given? First thing is this. It's, what are these on the top? Variables. Different variables that we had in our data set. It's showing sure. me all of those variables. And then it's showing, the first thing it's showing is count. Okay, how many values were there? So there were 50 different values, 50 values, 50 records that are there. And then it gives me mean. So it's giving me the average value. So the average value of the R&D spend was this number. Average value of administration is this much. Average of marketing spend is this much. Average of profit is so much, right? It's giving me these average values. And then it's got these other numbers too. Okay, STD. Anybody knows what that? Standard, 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 uh, standard, deviation. standard deviation. Standard deviation. What does the standard deviation mean? Standard deviation talks about how much variation is there in the data. Right. right? How much variation is there in the data? You guys are going to do the statistics module. You'll do this and you'll learn about standard deviations in detail later on. Right? But it's giving you the standard deviation. In addition, it's telling me what is the minimum value that was there? So there was this one company where the R&D spend was actually zero. And there was marketing company was zero. We don't know if it was the same company. It is just saying that the lowest value it found in that column was zero, right? And the highest value it found in that column was this number. The, so it's telling what is the lowest value it found and what is the highest value it found. And then it tells you about different quartiles. Um, what is the 25th percentile? Uh, median value and 75th percentile. Those numbers as to what exactly do quartiles mean uh, will be covered when statistics module starts. Right? right now, we are just getting familiar with data. We are fam getting familiar with pandas. Uh, there's a lot to talk about when you're talking about mean, median, mode, and uh, those other things. And that will eventually come. 
Any questions? Yes, Professor, I have a quick question again. Yeah. So uh, when we talk about data science, my understanding, since I'm a material science engineer, I have spoken to many people uh, in my domain. One big complaint from most material scientists and engineers is that we don't, we can't generate a lot of data. To give you an example, if I'm talking about a, a, a thermodynamic system where my variables are pressure, very <clears throat> pressure, volume, and temperature, we don't usually go by you know internal energy or kinetic energy of atoms, molecules, because that is taken care of by the big variables, pressure, volume, temperature. Okay, but if I have a big, uh, what do you call those uh, uh, rows? for the pressure volume temperature, but I don't have any other separate set of data, input data. Will I be able to uh, solve problem? Say, if I want to look into the stability of the phases, will right. that three variables, pressure, volume, temperature, suffice my uh, requirement? So solving problems come much, 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 much later. Okay, right? okay. Much, okay. much, much, much later, right? So okay. all we are doing right now is loading data. That's all. Right? Okay. But okay. eventually, ML, yes. when you guys come to the ML portion of it, that right. is when questions are appropriate. And you will be able to do it, right? Okay. Uh, we are going to start with very simple data sets right. where you sort of have an understanding of uh, what uh, different things mean, uh, right? And, right? And then... Uh, we are uh, at a stage where we are just going to do analysis of data. We haven't yet gone to a level where we are going to do prediction with data. Okay. Right? So okay. that is all much, much, much uh, later on. Right. Okay. But uh, it will all come in and it will make sense. These yeah, are all because that places. is where my interest lies in. Correct, correct. Absolutely. Which is why you are here, right? We are right. taking the first step. Um, absolutely. Right. Understood. Right. So um, now I, I want you guys to, uh, can uh, people who are able to load this data, are you able to type this and uh, get this output? Yes, if you sir. are, please uh, say yes. Good. Good. I, uh, I've seen at least uh, seven or eight uh, folks who have gotten here. So good. So things are um, moving reasonably well, right? Now, so what I've done is I've just typed this describe command and I've got this. Is anything missing here? It... State was missing, right? And state was there before, but it's missing. Why is that missing? It is not a, a, a string. Not numeric, right? It's numeric. Not numeric. It is not numeric. And so yeah. that is why it is not able to do this mean, median, mode, and all that uh, uh, for that. So it didn't do that. What do I do if I want to understand what type of data that is there? Okay. So there is an option. I can actually do describe. And I can do exclude. I can exclude um, numbers. So what did I do? I'm saying of all the variables you had, exclude the numerical variables. Show me these non-numerical variables and I want to understand what is there in the non-numerical variables. So now what does it say? It found 50 um, uh, entries again in state. Unique values, there were three unique values. The top one was New York, right? And the frequency of that was 17. 17 times in 17 of those records, New York appeared. What is that? What is a business conclusion you make from this? What is the business conclusion you make from that? Like New York York the New York. Most of this data that you have, they are a large number of them is from uh, New, York. New York. 
right? That is what uh, 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 the that's the business conclusion that you are uh, making. Now, is that exceptionally skewed towards New York? Sorry, exceptionally, exceptionally, I didn't get you. Skewed, skewed towards oh, New York. So for that, I think there needs to be some kind of graphical representation which will show that um, skewedness. Absolutely. We, we, we need a graphical representation. But uh, uh, Pradnya is actually saying no. Why is that? Why, is, why are you saying it's not skewed towards New York? Because there are three entries. There are three unique entries. Exactly. Uh, there are three uh, entries. One third is going towards New York. Exactly. Like About 17 times 3 is 51. Right? We have 50 entries. So um, the most common one is New York, which is 17. Right? And the other ones are must be about the same. Right? So we have about sort of even distribution of data. But Manoj, you're right. We have to see the distribution. We'll eventually have to see the distribution uh, to make these conclusions. To do distributions, we'll have to get to plotting, right? And it's we'll get there, but not, not today. Today, all we are going to do is load the data, sort of try and understand some basic commands from pandas. That is all that we are going to be doing. But eventually, you'll come there, you'll do the distribution, um, and you'll study relationship between two variables and all that. Um, so uh, next. Uh, uh, Next step, right? Um, I can uh, do this describe exclude number, or I can also uh, do uh, uh, this, right? I want to um, uh, uh, include no numbers as well, right? In which case, it actually just only shows the um, um, uh, the numerical values. Right? I can exclude num numbers or just include numbers. Uh, Karthik, uh, you are you are getting an error which says the argument uh, the uh, unexpected keyword. That's because exclude spelling is wrong. Yeah. Awesome. Now, what else can we do with uh, this? Right. So one of the things we can do is uh, sorting that uh, um, that's often that's interesting, right? Uh, so this is again something that you would typically do with Excel, right? Um, you would, um, um, when you're doing these analysis, um, so when you're doing this analysis uh, with uh, Excel, so the, this is a standard way in which you would do the analysis with Excel, right? I, uh, you would mark all of these columns. These are all these uh, variables. And um, I am just going to say format as a table. So all of this data is formatted as a table. And um, in Excel, I can actually go here and I can actually sort. So sort from smallest to largest value. And now this whole data will get sorted based on that particular thing, right? This is something that people who are using Excel often are familiar with. Then, so the question often comes, can I do this with uh, Python, right? Of course, so since that's an, uh, one of the standard things that uh, people do, the uh, Python allows you to do this as well. So sort, and I typed sort underscore, and immediately it's telling me this option. You see this, it's giving me, helping me how to fill that. So sort values. So I get to sort values. So I'm gonna hit this close bracket. Now it's gonna give me these options, okay? What kind of options are there? I can talk about uh, what do I want to, sort what are the different things i want to sort with so for example i'm going to sort values by um what value say profit data sort values by profit ah 
Now, look at that. It's put the lowest profit on the top and um, uh, highest profit by in the bottom. Right? I could um, also uh, sort values by two different things. By profit first and then by administration expenses. Right? And now it does that. Sir? Yeah. I'm sorry, if it's uh, case sensitive also, uh, while typing the uh, profit? Abs yes, absolutely case sensitive. That's one of those uh, uh, things which really, really uh, takes people a time to get uh, used to. Um, okay. It is case sensitive. Right. So um, the the uh, when I type profit with a capital P, that is different than profit with a small p. Okay. So you need to make sure that you're typing the variable name accordingly. How is it different, sir? Like, I mean, uh, I mean, if from a data set, like, how does it differ in from like a caps p and a small p? So, oh, no, no, nothing. So it's just that it won't know what, what you're talking about. It's okay, so it'll same... give an error? Yeah. you give an error? Let's see. Ah, oh, it has already given an error, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't understand. Um, it's like completely different. Like for us, it, it can't even guess. It's not even going to try and guess. So like, uh, so basically say, this is like what I'm getting. So I'm making an error somewhere which needs to be figured out later. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Now, what this error, there is always easy to figure out uh, this thing. Okay. What do I do when I get errors? Okay. Um, fortunately for all of us, there is always Google Baba. Google Baba is always available for help. All I need to do when I get an error like this, I typically try to understand what this is saying. Okay. Most of it is scary, right? This is like a complete horror movie. Uh, trace back, most recent call. I, I have no idea what this means. Typically come down, come to the bottom. So it says key error, profit. Okay. So it's actually saying it doesn't understand what profit means. Okay. Now, if you don't really understand that, here there is a button that says search stack overflow. Now, Stack Overflow is one of those geek havens, right? Where pretty much geeks go there, ask any programming questions that you have, and uh, there are people who answer, right? So one way, uh, Google actually helpfully offers you this, right? If you don't understand this, why don't you try and search in uh, Stack Overflow? There will be thousand other people who have asked the same question, and there'll be an answer somewhere there, okay? Now, however, in this case, it's saying that it's got something to do with profit, right? So I look at that, then I come back and say, okay, what could be wrong? Okay, then I look at the names. Okay, so just to make sure that I don't uh, make up this thing, I, I mark it and then I'm copying it there. And that gets it. Can you show me once more how to sort up based on two different values? Two different values. Okay. So that's where this command is. There. So let's uh, go ahead and try type that again. Data sort. Um, and I'm going to wait uh, until Google helps me with uh, uh, the, the fill. Now it's, uh, uh, it's starting to give me some options. Okay. Sort index or sort values. I want to sort values, right? Um, so I'm going to go for sort values and, uh, and it gives me a hint on that command. What is the command? What is it saying? Sort values. And then it says, open the brackets and say, buy. So what do you want to sort by? That is what this command is saying, right? Sort by. So I'm clicking that and then I'm going to go say buy. I want to sort by what now I'm going to sort by, I'm going to type the different variables that I have. First, I want to sort by profit. Then perhaps 
I can um, uh, sort by, uh, you know, let's go ahead and get this administration. That one too. Now, in order to sort two different values, two different ones, I need to enclose that in a square bracket. Okay. Um, what do I mean by when I enclose things by a square bracket? This is something you might have uh, learned in an earlier session. Um, Python D has lists. So you can create a list of number by putting things in square brackets, right? Or li list of anything. So, um, and here I'm saying, uh, this is a list um, uh, of uh, values that I'm, I'm putting. And uh, in, uh, this I'm sorting by this particular list. Okay. Sir, uh, one more doubt. Huh? Is there yeah. any difference if we use a single quote or double quote? Um, no, single quote, double quote doesn't matter as long as it's same. Okay. You're opening with a double quote, you close with a double quote. Okay. Okay. Um, now, there is two more things that I want to sort of uh, uh, talk about, right? This is basically I've sorted the values, right? Um, when I sort the values, um, the um, here I have sorted the values. It's starting with the this profit, uh, I, uh, low profit, and it goes all the way till the high profit, right? Now, let's again look at this data. Data dot I want to look at the top of this data, data.head. What am I seeing? Do I, am I seeing the first value that I saw there? No, it's a some other value, right? So I thought we sorted the values, right? But it's giving me um, unsorted values, just yeah. the way it's read initially, right? Now, the, here is a point that you need to understand. So what this command actually does is it sorts and then it expects you to save it in another variable if you want to save this. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. I can create a new variable called data new. And data new, I'm going to take data dot sort dot values uh, sort dot values curly brackets by we are going to do it by profit right profit okay now I have actually taken this uh, value and I've copied it into data new right let's now explore what is data new here. You see now, now it's got the values that are the sorted values has been saved. Okay, I took this command sorted and say the save the sorted one into a different data frame. Uh, so, Professor, can you please go back to the uh, command line once again? Let me, yes, data by equal to sort values by is equal to just give me a second i'll quickly finish it don't don't worry about this because you will get this sheet right okay okay you're going to get this sheet so that you will ah. be able to do all of this on your own okay now i'm going to teach you another trick if i you, you might ask me the question what if i want to i don't want to create waste memory by creating another variable i want this particular data frame to get sorted and there is a way for that so data dot sort underscore values by sorry, by equal to uh, we are going to sort it by profit right profit this was a command that we issued before right but we learned that this one doesn't actually save it right so if I want to ch save this one I can type this in place is equal to true Okay, 
I'm saying, I want you to do this in the current place itself. Sort it as it is, this particular one. Now, when I check data.head, this value is sorted. Okay. Is the idea what is the difference between uh, this data dot sort values that you showed right now and the previous? Uh, if I was not to place that in place is equal to true, what is the difference? So it just sorts it and prints it. It doesn't save it. Okay. 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 So just basically, I'm saving on some resource system resource that is. Uh, it's actually not saving anything. It's just temporarily computing the sorted value. Sir. But you you didn't ask it to assign it. You didn't assign it to any new variable. So it is just showing you that. That's it. Understood, sir. Got it. Right. Yes. So that effort is wasted. It's gone. But if you yeah. wanted to save it into itself, then you put in place equal to two. Yeah, sir. I had a question. Yes. Yeah, suppose sir. suppose you are sorting this on the basis of two keys, uh, profit and administration. So on which key will it get sorted? Will it First, be the get same? To... Yeah, the same way it's in Excel. You say first sort by this column, then you sort by that. Oh, column. okay. Right. Um, the ideas are actually very, very. If we have worked in Excel, that's many of the same ideas translate here. Now, a couple of more important points I want to touch upon before we uh, uh, wrap up the class. Uh, one of the things I wanted uh, this thing is dropping a row. Okay. I want to be able to, um, um, uh, so here is the, the data um, dot drop. I will be able to actually drop a row, uh, drop a particular record if I want. So in this case, let's say if I said, uh, let's remember what is there in the first one, right? The first one was what? 14681, that is a profit, right? I am right now trying to drop that first particular um, uh, row. So when I hit data.drop, what did it do? It actually drops. What happened? It didn't drop the first row. What did it do? Let me just come back to... Um, Okay, perhaps I need to do this data dot drop. Um, in place. Equal to two. Ah. So now let's see what happened data dot head. Okay. Now that same number is still there. Sir, uh, is sir uh, you know the the if you see the index number, it's starting from forty nine, right? And okay. uh, the first one got dropped actually. If you scroll down, I have seen it. I think if you use the tails or the dot dot tail, and then see if the index number is zero and one, if one still is there. I think you have to mention at zero. That's right. So now this is where now you're actually specifying which is the index that you're dropping. Right? Okay. What you're dropping is the not the this thing. You're actually saying which is the index that you're dropping. That is what it's uh, doing. Now, what if I actually want to drop a particular uh, 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 column? So then I specify the column and then I actually say which axis I'm dropping. Okay. Um, so let's try that. What's an axis, sir? So axis is, I am talking about um, whether rows or columns. Which one am I telling? When I specify that number uh, without saying anything, it's going to assume that I'm asking you to drop a record. Okay. Otherwise, if I want to drop a column, I'm actually specifically telling what is the column that I need to drop. 
right so now axis is zero that is row axis is zero that is row now let us see i dropped one right yeah. i dropped one let us check what happens now uh, data dot head profit is there what's happening i thought i dropped it Sir, uh, you will have to uh, see data dot tail, sir, because you have sorted the data and the index is presently down. Uh, no, 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 you're right. But I'm saying the profit, I, I just dropped the column profit, right? I said drop. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Profit mm -hmm. axis equal yeah. to one. So you have to in place. Very nice. In Very nice. Excellent. Uh, so I need to do data dot drop. I'm going to drop profit. And I'm going to say which axis I'm going to drop. Axis equal to one. Then I'm going to say in place equal to two. Very nice. So what is axis equal to one? Like which axis? Axis, it, axis equal to zero is basically along a row. Row. Axis equal to one is, is y. Along, yeah. So okay. So that okay. particular axis is what we are dropping. So now let me check data dot head. Mm -hmm. And the profit is gone. Okay. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. I was able to drop the uh, profit. Now, um, one more important point that I needed to convey, which I haven't uh, done. So let me do that by using this other data set. Um, um, I, I know some of you had trouble getting this uh, data set, but um, I'm hoping that majority of you were able to, uh, majority of you were able to get uh, this file. So let me go ahead and re, uh, do this command, automobile start file, right? Collab notebook, data sets, automobiles, copy path. I'm gonna paste this over there. Now I've read this new data from uh, which I had stored in the this thing. Let me just check what that data is, head, data dot head. This was the automobiles data. Okay. Okay, so this data has um, more of the stuff that is there. Um, now, what is the first thing that I want to do if I need to sort of understand what type of information is there? Data dot in. Very nice. Very nice, data.info. Sorry. Data.info, there. It's telling me there are these different columns that are there, aspiration, drive wheel, wheelbase, length, width, all of that. Some of them are strings, some of them are numerical values. Okay. Now, what if I want to understand what is the um, you know average values of these numerical numbers? Data dot describe. Very nice, excellent. Data dot describe. Wonderful. We have a sharp curve here. Data dot describe. Okay. So now it's telling for wheelbase. Uh, how many uh, for each one of them it's telling how many entries are there looks like all together there are about 205 entries that are there i can confirm that by doing this how do i check what is the size of the data data dot shape wonderful data dot shape 205 205 records 18 columns are there and there, and that is why when I did data.describe, I found that the wheelbase has 205, uh, length has 205, and all of these guys are having 205, right? Now, it seems like a waste that if there are 205 records, why is it repeating 205 for every single thing? It seems like such a waste, right? Or is it a waste? Do you see anything different? Uh, there are some null values, I think, sir, in bore and stroke. Nice. Because there are bore is not 205. It's 201. Stroke is 201. What is this? I thought there were 205 records. And it turns out the file that we loaded in 
does not not all of them actually had values okay yeah right not all of them had values so and this is very 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 typical that you will see right when you have a when you're dealing with data set look at this here for this particular car the price was not available right some the data that we often the data that we are going to be dealing with will not necessarily be a full data and that is exactly why this describe command is useful it's now talking about each one of these variables and it's saying whether it has the full set or not right now i could i could actually go ahead and look at each one and say look data and i can look at uh, the price right i can look at the data price and then and do describe okay so for just that variable i can do describe i pick the variable uh, the, this thing and that one says oh there is 201 entries there were 205 records but only 201 values were there so there were four values that were missing mm. right so i can actually manually go and look at each one of the columns and say how many values are missing that's possible but clearly not scalable right what if i have 205 columns as well so that's why there is this other command data okay I have for data this entire data this thing i want to check how many null values are there is something a null value or not okay now let me just type this is null command and check what it gets okay when i hit enter oh what does it do what did it do? It, it looked at that. my entire data frame. Every single entry, it went and checked, is this null? Is this null? Is this null? It checked for everyone to check, is it null or not? Right? Now, this is too much information for me. Right? I can't, it's very hard for me to understand. All I want to do is each one of the columns, is that null or not, is what I want to find out. So when there is null, it will say true, right? Now, you know this in, in Boolean, false is zero, true is one. Right. right. So all I can do is I can just do sum. I can add up. And when I do addition, what does it say? Oh, in aspiration, I got zero, which means in that column called aspiration, there were no null values. In drive wheel, there was no null values, but in bore, there were four values that were null. In stroke, yeah. there are four values that are null. Right? Now, this is where the idea of why drop command gets useful. You can, once you find out something is null, you will be able to drop it from your analysis. Right, and this is exactly why we do these kinds of uh, uh, analysis. Right now, what have I done? Uh, so, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, so, do I drop that entire uh, variables, or do I only home onto those specific rows or records that have null values? Good question. You tell me. Uh, ideally, I should actually uh, home onto those specific records if I'm not wrong. Correct. That's right. So, again, this is entirely a domain question. What do I do, right? Now, the way I think about it is this, right? I know that there are 205 records, right? Now, for there are price, four prices that are missing. Now, if only four of them are missing, there is no point in uh, uh, removing all the two other 201 values, right? So I won't choose to drop a column. I would just true to uh, remove those particular rows. On the other hand, if I find one particular column, which has say uh, 203 missing values, then that entire column, most of it is missing value. I'll rather drop that column and then do, move on. So the decision is going to be driven by how many values are missing and how many values are present. Right? And I have a question here. If those values are have any relationship with other 
values for example when i say price as a relationship with uh, uh, say uh, uh, engine horsepower. size something like that yeah price might be have a relationship with the horsepower yeah uh, horsepower or yeah so right? what do i do if i ignore this or that will be an ideal situation correct correct so there is going to be a very good question so this is where i am going to talk about the limitation of what have we done what have we done we have loaded the data put data into a data frame and we have gotten the ability to take each one of the variable and analyze each variable separately right we have not looked at relationships between variables yet okay right? yeah. we haven't looked at relationships which is a very key aspect so your question actually goes to that uh, uh, okay. how do i understand relationship between variables right and, and all i'm going to say is you are going to study that in detail later but i am going to just give you a hint of what is going to come okay uh, because so going... when we say dropping something so i don't know how important it is Absolutely. based on this number alone absolutely i don't know how important it is right i but in order to study the importance one of the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to study relationships between two variables okay right and one of the first thing that you all know is plotting right plotting allows you to study relationship between two things right so one of the plots that we do is scatter plots so again this you will be studying this in detail at some other point but i'm just uh, just to pique your curiosity i'm just going to type it i want to understand relationship between for example two variables right which variable can i do horsepower right and data dot let's see what variables are there price i want to study the relationship between those two so i can get a scatter plot oh wow right yeah. now i am no longer looking at a single variable i'm understanding relationships between variables now what is this what will you tell from this sorry i have just two more minutes so let's quickly uh, this thing right what does it tell me on the x axis i have horsepower which is misspelled as horsepower but and the y axis is price what does it tell me it says that as the horsepower increases price increases price increases so cars which have greater horsepower are more expensive right now you are allowing you are studying relationships between two variables this is something you will do later on but all we have done is looked at loaded it up looked at each one of the variable try to understand uh, through through describe what is uh, the mean variable values uh, what is the extreme values and so on and so forth that is all we have done the next step you are going to do is understand uh, uh, relationships between variables how to plot there are a variety of plots that you can do to understand all of that and so all of this is still in understanding data we haven't come to prediction prediction is much 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 later right but yes. this is all understanding but even with understanding there's lots of insights to be gained and lot of business value to be gained when uh, you have done with the understanding of data yeah. yes professor okay. anand one thing uh, sorry i'll just quickly finish this question uh, having seen the original excel file from That's which you exported the whole data those missing values were assigned not applicable in a right it wasn't zero yeah zero is a value zero has a meaning that's how excel takes it right if there is not no no I not really. how... you can enter zero as zero well zero is a value no no zero is a value uh, correct if zero is a value it's a number zero, right if price was zero that's giving you some information exactly whereas it's not being there is means, being something else data is missing right and i mean right? like data is missing if i'm not wrong so right. you should not replace missing value with zeros okay okay zero okay. is a number with a meaning okay right? in this case it means price was zero which means something very different than i don't know the price okay okay when it's missing okay. you are saying i don't know the price right right, right. when it's right. zero it actually means something else right so missing value analysis is a, uh, is a big topic again you will learn more than that 
Okay. But um, uh, anyway, thank you so much for paying attention. I uh, absolutely uh, appreciate all the questions, right? It makes a class interactive. I uh, love the fact that you guys volunteered to turn the video on so that I get a feel that I'm actually talking to you guys. Uh, that So uh, that helps keeping the class uh, interactive. I will share this uh, uh, collab, right? I know that some of you had trouble loading this data and so yeah. on, but hopefully when you look back at it, you will be able to replicate this on your own where, with, under your uh, uh, own, own time, right? Um, so I, I truly appreciate uh, your, all the interaction. I hope uh, this gives you some confidence that you will be able to do at least uh, the initial uh, extract uh, extraction of data or, or ex any initial exploratory analysis by, by uh, on your own soon. Okay. Um, as always, I um, uh, uh, Jayant uh, uh, mentions it was uh, we we very much appreciate if you um, uh, give us uh, reviews on sure. Trustpilot uh, yeah. for that. Right. It uh, helps in uh, carrying this good work that uh, Jayant is uh, doing. Jayant, yeah. uh, you want to take over, please? Yeah, first off, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Anand, for your time. Really appreciate that. Uh, and, and being incredibly patient and, and you know, doing it in your style, uh, which I, I am a big fan and I'm sure the community also likes it. So just before, you know, everybody goes, um, uh, two things. One is I would really, I've shut off the chat so you guys can talk. Um, I would really appreciate it if you can actually go to Trustpilot uh, all reviews are equal, but some reviews are more equal than the others. Just give us five star, right? Nothing less. Uh, I'll tell you why, because I'll be shameless about it. You know, people, newer members of the community who come in the first thing, even if you're ordering biryani or go to Zomato, you look at reviews and they come in. So if you want to attract quality people, you know, more higher pedigree, they're going to read the reviews, make it thoughtful, make it this thing. Let's take up a three, four minutes about that. Um, and I'm going to be, sorry, I'm being a little you know, hard on that, but I, I would really, we need to race to like a lot of reviews uh, quantity first, and then we'll worry about the quality and just summarize the top three learnings. So I repeat, five-star rating with top three learnings of what you've done right now, um, you know, uh, good or bad, you know, hopefully more good. And uh, meanwhile, once you're done, type done in the chat box, guys. I need, a, I need at least all 47 dones and, um, you know, then, I would request only if you're done with your trust pilot review, you can go ahead and ask you know, Dr. Anand uh, any question, uh, either with this current last two hours of wonderful session or in adjacent topics. I, I, I hope, uh, sir, you have like five, six, maybe four, five minutes as people complete the trust pilot review. Is that comfortable for you? Sure. Yeah, speak about the ad ones now to drop in the columns. One sec. Funny, uh, I, like I said, if you're done with the comment, just say done and then you, you may ask. Thank you. Yeah, I have done and have put the chat message as well, I believe. Wow, perfect. Oh, I didn't see it. I just got dates. Just write to everyone so that others also can see. I missed out doing it myself today, sir. I'm feeling very <laughs> left out right now. So I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll come back next week. <laughs> In a, in a stronger manner. <laughs> I like I made some errors. I don't know what happened. Yeah, so I just need to get it sorted. So don't worry about it. Yeah, you'll get it. Chrome was not built in a day. Yeah. So, uh, funny, you want to talk about the access question? So, sir. So um access um essentially when you are uh, any of the actions that you're doing, right? Um, for example, let's talk about this one, right? Data, uh, one second, let me 
share my screen. I realize I stopped my share. Okay, um, so we just looked at this particular command. Um, am I audible? Yeah, okay. So I we looked at the data dot is null, right? We were checking whether there's a, a NAs are there or not. Now, when I did some, what I, I uh, let's let's go back, right? We are what a data dot is null do? It basically took this entire data frame and made everything as checked every single entry whether it is null or not null. That's what it did, right? Now I wanted to do a trick it in figuring out. Um, and you using this feature to figure out uh, how many nulls are there in each of these columns. So for that, I actually went ahead and did sum. So add up all the false or true entries and tell me report it. That is what I told. Um, and so when I did that, now it's telling me whether there, there were four nulls in this particular but then, uh, yeah. Yes. Sorry. Uh, no, uh, sir. Um, my doubt is sorry to inter inter uh, interrupt. Uh, my doubt is that uh, um, can we get the percentage of uh, null? Absolutely. Null? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. How how do you get a percentage of null? You tell me. Is there any function uh, instead of some? Is there something function like dot percentage? Uh -huh. nah, so uh, the, uh, so there is, but the, here is the easiest way. So let's not. Look at new commands, right? For whatever you have learned, we know, right? Okay. Data dot shape. What does that give me? Total. Okay. Total number of co uh, columns. And exactly. Exactly. So now it's uh, I know there are two hundred and five rows. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now you want to find out uh, percentage. How do I get percentage? I have the total. How do I get percentage? Okay. Total divided by number of. Columns. Yeah, uh, by number of rows. Yeah, number five. of rows. Right now, so I want to extract this to it. So one is I can take this, right, and put it, and then do by two hundred and five. Right, that's okay. one way of doing it, and uh, that will tell me you know the percentage is about one point nine percent. That's what it tells. But okay. then. You might ask, but this code doesn't scale, right? If I go to some other data set, it won't be 205, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So yeah. how do I do that? Well, the thing is data.shape gave me two numbers, right? Data.shape mm -hmm. gave me, first one was number of rows, second one was number of columns, right? Okay. Yeah. I want to get the first number. Mm -hmm. In Python, the index for the first number is what? Zero. Zero. So I want to get the first number. When I do shape dot zero, it gives me two zero five. Okay. So now I can just do this data dot shape. Sorry. Shape of zero. Now this code will scale anywhere. You yeah. you read you go read a data set that is a million rows long. Even in, now you'll get a percentage automatically. Yeah. Right. So that's where the, this thing is. Now let me just uh, 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 go back to the uh, the other one. Let's go back and do this data dot uh, 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 this thing null. Now when I did sum, it actually went and did summation along the uh, columns, and it uh, uh, falses were all zeros, trues were all one, and it did the summation along the columns, right? Now, what if I wanted summation along the rows? I need a way to specify it, whether I'm talking about summation along column or summation along rows. Any of the actions that we do, I need to be able to specify on whether it is along the columns or rows. And this is where access command helps. Now, when I type access uh, thing, now what does it say? It talks about along the first row, they were zero. 
nulls. Second row, there was zero and so on and so forth. Now it's doing summation along the rows. If I had done axis equal to zero, now it would have done the other way, summation the other way. So axis is a way to control whether you want to do the operation this way or that way. Okay. When you're dropping something, again, you have a choice. Do I want to drop this way or drop that way? And that is what the axis command does. Axis, uh, not command, the axis specification tells you whether you want to drop along one side or the other side. So in a way, uh, axis is equal to zero is the default. Correct. So in each one of them, it sort of knows what is the most common action you are going to do. And that is usually the default. This thing that we did, typically finding the null values, which are the missing values, the, uh, things are aligned along this way, right? Along the variables, right? So by default, it assumes this is what you want to do and does that. But if you do want to do something other than what is default, you specify the axis. Okay? Okay. okay. Thank you so much for uh, the questions and the interactions. I, uh, sure, is this a recurring interested. class? Uh, uh, I, it's not a meaning, but uh, uh, I'm sure Jayant is uh, uh, the, the regular instructor, but uh, uh, once in a while we'll uh, uh, have this uh, kind of session. Okay. Uh, I'll make it, I'll make, I'll try and make it uh, interactive. I got 18 reviews, man, and there are 45 people. So let's, let's, let's get all at least more than like 75% and then, you know, subject to Dr. Anand's availability, we can try and request him. Uh, Professor Anand, yeah. my last question to you is, how do I extract one single row from the entire matrix? Very nice. So again, while uh, people are hopefully typing the review, we will uh, uh, answer this, right? Now, this is another thing, right? I type data and I'm trying to, uh, there, there is a pattern to all of this, guys, right? So we did data.shape, right? And uh, when I did data dot shape, I got two numbers. When I want to specify the first number, I put a square bracket and talk about first number or second number. Right. right? That is the pattern, right? So now if when I'm doing for the data, if I start putting in the square brackets to specify which one I want, what is the option it's giving me? It's giving me columns. Yes. Right? So it naturally assumes that when I open this, I want to ask some question about different columns. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to actually ask about one particular row, right. if I want to ask about one particular row, I need to specify that I want, I'm looking for to locate a particular record. Right. Okay. And for that, there is a command, there is an option called I lock. I is integer. Lock means locate. I want to locate. When I located the 25th record, it said for the 25th record, these are the features. Okay. Um, so any record that I want to locate, I need to specify with an I lock, but Python has made it easy so that you don't have to always type this for most common tasks. Most common tasks are you're analyzing variables and which is why by default, when you start opening it up, it allows only for variables, not records. If you want to reach a specific record, you reach with I lock. Okay, locate, uh, uh, lock stands for locate. You're trying to locate a record. But strangely, I'm getting only five. You have got so many aspiration, oh. drive Well, I have got R&D spent, administration, marketing right. spent. But that is a different data set. You are looking, you are looking at that different data set. The data oh. set was the 50 startups data set. This is the automobiles okay. data set. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. okay, guys. Thank you so much. Um, okay, Jain, I'll take leave. Yeah. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Bye. All right, guys. So I'll just uh, continue along with some uh, music. And whoever has finished the review can drop. The rest, please finish it and leave. But this is some cool EDM. Then I just wanted to ask, like, I mean, we'll have this particular recording because I missed some part of it. Uh, like, I don't know, like yeah. some, glitch, some glitches from my side, not able to follow a few things. So don't worry, don't be so hard. You, this is the first time you program. You can't be like, uh, like no, I am already seeing some uh, some geeks over here, like who are asking so many questions, and I am like, oh god, I'm not even able to run one code properly. <laughs> like shame, 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 shame. No, nothing like that. It's good. Chrome was not built in a day. It's okay. You just yeah. be patient about yourself. Yeah. Okay. The idea is not to um, compare yourself with others. The idea is to just be yourself and be like compare yourself. Like in one week also now, if you don't do from now, then you should be like <laughs> this one, that's it. So don't worry about it. The best coders, are, I told you, the best coders are all not the most qualified. They're just the people who grind it out. To go back, like okay, axis equals zero means what? Axis equals one means what? Whoever is some of you are silently grinding it out. That's the only thing. Right. Remember our tenets and core values. Just go back. I was also not a great programmer. I just first time also when I attended courses, I didn't do anything. Only when I hit rock bottom, I started like programming my way. But if you if you if you ace programming, sky is the limit. It's the same thing for blockchain. It's the same thing for quantum computing. Everything is the same. But you have to like cross this. Okay. Whoever is done in. Uh, uh, James, one question. Yeah. Uh, so this is what you mentioned that uh, pre-processing, right? Yeah. yeah this is. Huh? Okay. So this is the, what we need to have kind of solid expertise. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is the grunt work. This is this is boring. This is actually extremely this thing. So I, I we've told in the webinar also, right? It's pre-processing, batting, bowling, fielding, pre-processing, model building, model deployment. So we've not come to the model building part yet. That's the sexy part, which everybody likes: self-driving car, cancer curing. Um, uh, you know, NLP, etc. They are not there. This is the pre-processing part. Seeing it, just if you have a data set in Excel and if you can just understand what is the average, what is standard deviation, that itself is great. It'll start becoming complicated a little more. Like, okay, you have to ingest data. Today is stored startup data, right? Obviously, that was like a doctor data set. Doctor data set is there on the website. But now I am actually making my own startup database, like all the investor database. I'm trying to get it from AngelList, from PitchBook. So on, so forth, stitching all of that. That is pretty uh, uh, Jain, one small query. Uh, only if you're okay. I uh, is there any chance I can? Uh, if I if, are you okay? If I speak to Dev Dev Jyoti Bhattacharya and help him out, or uh, yeah, sure, that... why not? Yeah, 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 within community, please. Yeah, so, okay. so please. So that's why I'm structuring this like a community, only not a course. Course is very transactional. Okay. So uh, I would request you to just uh, show up for the weekly or the fortnight calls also we have. Yeah, it's a community based only. Okay. So I'll just, uh, I can send my email to him, right? So that. Yeah, yeah just, just private. Him him. Yeah. I'll Thanks, just... man. Thanks, Roshan. Okay. Yeah. So you can just, hey, uh, yeah. I'll just put my email on the chat so you can just mail me and then we, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. discuss. Thank yeah. you very much, man. No, no, no Thanks. problem. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So, Jayant, uh, are you going to assess the assignments? Uh, I'm curious because I took uh, day and night to finish that assignment. <laughs> the first, the, the success the first, mindset. Yeah, the first, the first, the first assignment. assignment. Yeah. yeah, success mindset assignment I'm reading actually. Okay. I'm reading some of the answers that you guys have. I haven't been able to like send feedback personally as much as I want because of bandwidth, honestly. Yeah. Rest of the assignments, me, Anand, and I am, I'm planning one more guest lecture next week. Honestly, for me, I'm trying to look at who's like one of the best faculties. So for you guys, you know, depending on budget and the cost and all so that. Which assignments are you talking about? Because in the website, I could see there's only one assignment asked for. That is assignment one. By any chance, uh, are there any other assignments which have been also? Okay. So the way you want to think about this is, so everything is modularized, right? Right. All you have access to orientation. Right. If you have access to orientation, raise your hands. Right. Yeah. That's that's the basic success mindset, and there's yes. a but that's the idea. Without uh -huh. right, right, right. I got it. Nine, ten questions. I'm planning to add more assignments to that, but not now. So, right, as of now, you should have only that. Okay. Now, the second one is the introduction to Python. Introduction to Python also, it's basically EDA, make features, uh, third one and fourth one, and print, right? 
So like that, each of that has an assignment. Okay. Originally, what I did was you upload the assignment, right? Based on the lecture, the data set is slightly changed. And then it was going to be manually graded. Even for that, I wrote a script. Okay. And yeah. The script is not working. So I'm going to phase it out. And now I'm going to keep an MCQ. So I'm designing that MCQ so that you will know your grade automatically. Okay. That, that is the process in place right now. So the assignment is going to be there. But obviously, uh, you know, for me, manually grading that is just beginning just way too tedious. That's why I'm trying to automate grade the all the module one, um, number two, number three, number four, so on and so forth. Except orientation. Orientation, I just, I don't know of a way. If you guys have ideas, let me know. One idea that I did get to know was a community-based idea where maybe three of you will see your ideas. Only three of you privately will, will be able to grade each other's goal card, etc. But that's, again, work in progress. That's not something concrete. Cool. Uh, anybody else who's, uh, who's finished the reviews, please let me know. Yeah. Okay. One more thing is, uh, thank you so much, Roshan, for being proactive and coming out. Uh, feel free to like set up a call or, or uh, you know, depending on guys and also leverage his time like very, uh, you know, uh, wisely. But all the community aspects, again, maybe once you hit 1,000 members, it starts making sense. Hence the reviews, right? Sucks. Only quality begets quality, guys. Right. So, in, and one more thing is, I've realized people don't. At, at see, we are very young. We're only six months old. People are not reading the length of the review. People are first looking at okay, how many reviews are there? Because I saw and I asked and I did surveys. Even even I am like that. Like when I'm trying to order like a new food place, I'm seeing the number of reviews. Right. So let's first race as fast as possible to the you know maybe five hundred or thousand reviews. Then I'll work on the depth of the review. I'm getting a lot of private emails. A lot of you guys. Very, very warm wishes. I know there's a lot of quality, but right now we have to optimize only for quantity, right? Let's get quality, quantity reviews. Then that means there's more money in the community for getting high quality professors, et cetera, right? Right now, like, you know, no offense, but getting an IIT, like, <laughs> we take that, like guy, person like Anand's caliber is like really very, very high level. And I, I just can't keep somebody low level. I just can't like, I want to learn from somebody like I would have wanted to learn, right? I want you guys also to learn from somebody who's of that level and quality and wherewithal, right? So, and that costs budget. That just did. So, so that's my game plan. I hope I've been able to convince you. Open to thoughts, open to telling, you know, how can we make it better? And better. Uh, because once I get a critical mass of high quality people, you know, both students and then the faculty, then the snowballing happens, right? Right now, we're not yet there. We have to spend a lot of energy, asymmetric energy. Yeah. Any, any other questions? Was I in the dual degree? Yeah, I was. I was yeah, in. I could guess that. <laughs> the IIT Madras, yeah, I was in. By the yeah. way, he was also IIT Bombay. So Anand is also IIT Bombay. Yeah, I was about to ask him which hostel uh, he was staying. I was in the eight. <laughs> yeah, then then I will throw brick brats. So such things you should certainly ask. You should not ask like oh, which hostel in the. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. Any other ideas? Any other ways to like uh, move faster would be great. I we might not have the inner circle this week because we had this session. Next week I'm having one more lecturer. Uh, he's also fantastic. He, I will tell you the date because he's also busy. Uh, this is the faculty's name. Uh, on on a topic, just again. Uh, give me one sec. I'll just pull this right now. Next week or the week thereafter. The idea is uh, yeah. So he's he's also a founder of an AI company. Uh, twenty years in, in like IBM. Twenty one years. So this is the faculty I'm trying to get. If you have any faculty in AI that you want that that's really high quality, let me know. I'll go and chase them and try and get them. Okay. So here's the person. Okay, I can actually share my screen. Also. I can give you quite a few names from mostly the IITs. I'm not so familiar with the IIM faculties, but <laughs> I mean, IIT, IIT and suck. I mean those from the statistics and the mathematics. No, 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 no. IIT and suck. Like I'm IIT, I really but <laughs> humility matters. Right. The ability to be patient matters. See, yeah. IIT is like one foundation. That's okay. But you have the see, a, a chair has like four legs. No, one is okay. Like, mm. um, like some of the IIT professors are horrible. 
Mm-hmm. Like really horrible. Like uh, I don't know. NPTEL lectures are so crap. So uh, I mean, it's it's it sucks really. Sometimes if you go through the IIT Roorkee, IIT Guwahati lectures, it's I'm I'm. No, no, I am. Like, that's what I told last time also. I'm like a co-creator now. I don't like. I'm going to IIT Madras to get certification, but I don't believe like I don't believe like certification is everything. But all right. even more people are only clicking those ads. So like the co uh, Have you uh, opened a office? You have taken an office space in IIT Madras in the research park. You okay. other day, were... okay, 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 okay. I didn't know. Okay, so Rajiv Kumar is going to be the next faculty. He's agreed for another guest lecture. I'm looking at maybe the second. Again, the idea is also to make it congruent with the syllabus I have done. So that way you can say that, oh, no, Anand was better than Jay. At least that kind of discussion will come. No, <laughs> Otherwise, it will be like some other topic you won't even have and, and all that. So uh, he's solid. He's in the, and his teaching style even I like. Uh, it's kind of different. And these guys are all fully proficient, like all the way from Python data science, all the way to recurrent neural networks. CNN. So that's, I'm seeding actually for the gold, like the AI gold is going to come up, right? Uh, the last, so there's bronze, silver, gold, bronze, silver, gold. So all the way to gold. And you guys also should like them, right? It's not like only I keep pushing something and you take it, right? All of you should. Have. And he, they should also like you. It seems like my early impression is I think Anand was okay. But you guys would have to talk to him. Cool. Anybody else left with reviews? I'll finish my reviews tonight. I'll send you yeah. a more expanded review. I promise that. Yeah, yeah. Because see, if you write, I'll tell you one thing, you write long reviews, there are people who read them. Yes. Come. People who, are, who write short reviews, I'm not lambasting it, you guys. I'm just saying, think about it, right? Short reviews will get short guys only. Or like just neurotic <laughs> reading everywhere, trying to jump after course after course. There are people who write long, start writing long because you have to write blogs, you have to write good emails, articulate emails. Those are where the best opportunities are. Cool. Anything else you guys need before I call it a night or you guys call it a night? Don't worry about it now. Now you know, right? I'm just saying like, uh, uh, just start writing long. That's why my emails are long. They're going to be longer. They're not for the guy who's like on the bathroom, just scrolling up and reading, etc. No, this is going to be really, really long. Yeah. Umeshji, I hope you had uh, you you had some little bit of uh, good experience. If you can unmute, you can talk just quickly. You're not there. Time for dinner. <laughs> He's already hungry. Hello. Maybe. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible, sir. Guess how that? Did you have fun? At yeah. Least? No, it was a, uh, it was okay sort of, but I was lost. I should honestly accept it. I was completely lost and I was trying to scribble it down and this thing. So somewhere after going through the YouTube video or this thing, your live lecture, I'll be, I'll be doing my homework. I have to spend long hours. Okay. Yeah. After long 24 years, 25 years, again into learning path, no? it's difficult. That's but uh, surely I'll make it up. Don't worry. Don't worry. It'll happen. Don't worry about it. That's the, that's the beauty of a community, you know. Like uh, there are different people to help. There, are, there are people you know ahead. There are people who probably need more help. So don't worry about that. The good thing is you showed up. That's it, right? Uh, Umeji, I had a question. Do you travel to Pune? I stay in Pune. So if you're sometimes coming to Pune, we can have a quick chit chat. I mean, we can we can we can drink that all. We need to have a glass of beer. Drink chips and everything. Good, good. good glass of beer. Good. And that should be perfect. <laughs> okay. I, I would I would actually not do the beer. I would actually do the collab notebook, and then after that the beer. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> though is already <laughs> come on for beer. Let's have beer. Yeah, yeah. And others, Srinivasgar, how how was how did you feel? Are you in Canada, Singapore? Where are you? You're on mute. Mm-hmm. I, I asked to unmute you so you can, I think you can mute. Can't hear you. I don't know, I can't hear him. Can anybody hear him? No. Okay. Still in India, I'm in Chennai. Oh, wow, wow, yeah, we can hear you. Excellent. How was your first coding session? Was- um, I'm, I've read a lot like this before. I 
I accumulated enough experience of coding. The only thing is I didn't put in pattern. That's all. It's a 10 year gap for me to really do coding. So I'm slowly coming back. I used to be a DBA. Not okay. anymore. So, good, good. so I'm slowly coming back. So I'm I trying to recall whatever I did before. So when he was talking, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this, I know this, oh yeah, yeah. I need to okay. rebrush myself to really come back to I was thinking like it was yeah. a good um refreshment for me. Yeah, yeah. It was excellent. I mean, Jay, I told you I was looking for those kind of uh, persons who really yeah. made those transition. And no, no, he's, he's one know. of the best. He's definitely one yeah. of the best. He's in Sophie's like faculty. I know he writes scripts for hedge funds and all. He, he, he's yeah. really passionate about teaching. Uh, maybe even I am sometimes less passionate, but he's very passionate. So, and there are a lot of opportunities. He's doing real cutting edge work in crypto and, and his wife also runs a startup, okay. a big company, MNC. So there are solid people. So just follow along. First time you won't be able to crack it. It's okay. Just be be a roach. You're right. I started with that cockroach. Roach means cockroach. Huh? Somebody, my, my employee was asking, what is roach? Cockroach, nothing else. Just stick at it, stick at it. You won't get access to such such people for, for so long. And and these guys have come back from US, like he's a US citizen. Yeah. So so they're really here to serve and all. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. So uh mostly this this inner circle might be tentative, but then uh, next week the session will be there. I'm trying to look at uh, if it's going to be make features the next uh, the next course. So just to summarize, try to finish EDA by next week, right? I'm going to, giving you the link again to submit the assignment. Um, where, where, how do I get this? Yeah. Try to do it independently of pair program. Others have volunteered very nicely. Pair programming is very nice. Uh, at least try to meet once this Saturday, if time permits. Uh, you know, Roshan's been kind enough to walk there. So I've just kept the assignment link there. Try to submit it. You'll get like a seminal feeling. That that itself is good. You can have five years after that. Right. Oh, Jay, I forgot to mention you. Possibly I have... Uh, so uh, the trigger list that you kept open in that assignment, the trigger list, I guess I'm uh, pronouncing it rightly. Uh, there was the last question in the assignment was a trigger list, like where you, I forgot what was the question or what was that, but there was an access to a link. When I opened it, it is taking me to a malware site. Oh, so, okay. Just send me that on email, no? Okay, okay. I'm short on that, please. Okay. Okay, anybody else who has an access issue or anything, onboarding issue, if they didn't get access to Canvas or something, just email me, I'll just drop in my email right now. Okay. And if you go, if you know friends who, who are good referrals, let me know. I think I'm going to start a referral program or something. Okay. But either way, just let me know because it's good to be confused with friends, pair programming, right? <laughs> so, okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, no, no, Ujwal, you, you should have uh, the access to that course. One second. It's just the canvas second, second, uh, first Python and the second. Okay, let me reshare that with you guys. Can you can you open this now? Yeah, just try this one. Uh, we'll get that link. Okay, so if you finish EDA by this week, then we can try and do make features. The next one, uh, hopefully Rajiv can do that. Cool. All right, guys, thank you for your time. Any other questions, let me know. You have my email ID. Any other suggestions to, to grow the community, to get quality people, uh, let me know too. Thank you, appreciate your time. Thank you, bye. And don't worry about like things going over your head and all, it's okay, it's completely fine. Thanks, Jay, thanks everyone. No problem, thank you. Bye. Please, if you've not completed the review, complete the review, guys. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Hey.